Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good morning from South Australia. <laughs> Greetings to you. Um, as you jump on, please say hi. Let me know that you're here. And as always, I'm just going to take a second just to make sure that this is actually um, streaming as public because we've done numerous broadcasts in the past where um, it hasn't been public. <laughs> and we've had lots of messages from you guys going, wow, great broadcast, but I couldn't share it. So I am just going to make sure right now that this is, yes, it's looking like it's live. Wow, how exciting. That's really great, it's public. Hello, hello, hi everybody. Good to see you, Mississippi. Ah. Oh. I'm just so thankful for these moments for the internet where we can just reach like across the world and say hello to you in another nation live. Hello, hello. Oh, so good to see everyone. Okay, I'm just going to double check this before we dive in. Give me like 10 seconds, guys. Imagine there's a elevator music playing right now that you can all listen to. Here we go. Um, how do I share? Okay. I am getting really, really like, well, my declaration is I'm getting really good <laughs> at operating all this technology and all these social media platforms. I have my husband in another room in case I, I muddle it, but I think we're good. Hello. So good to see everyone. Oh, such a joy to be with you. Well, I'm not going to um, take all the time sitting here just uh you know, talking, because I'm going to invite on one of my dear friends in a moment that I know many of you are familiar with, uh, our dear friend Matt Beckenham, but I wanted to just quickly um, just give you a little bit of background on this live. We haven't done a live for a little while. Uh, it's been quite, well, quite a little while, actually. Um, but the other day we had uh, Matt come on our online school that we have just started, positioned in purity. And, uh, and as Matt was ministering, uh, the Lord took me into uh, this encounter and I saw just these rivers that were flowing uh, out of Matt. And then I saw a river that was flowing uh, out of me and there was a river coming like a waterfall from heaven, but they were all colliding. Uh, at once. And as I was watching this happen, the Lord said, um, I am releasing rivers of refreshing right now. And, uh, and I was really encouraged by that because I know that many of you um, are in a time where you have been in tremendous battle. You've been uh, facing, you know, opposition and certain circumstances. And I know personally uh, from just my own time sitting with the Lord, how he has been showing me so many that um, have just been weary. And so today, as um, Matt and I jump into this, I know that the Holy Spirit is really going to minister to you. I really felt this morning that uh, he's going to bring a deep refreshing to your, your heart, to your soul. And so I want you to be expectant uh, for the Holy Spirit to really move and minister to you in this time, because I, I really feel like you're about to have a big, cold glass of water <laughs> that's going to really refresh you. So without further ado, just like, let's all believe that I can bring on Matt, like, right, <laughs> and I'm not going to muck this up. So let's bring him on. Hey, Matt, hello. <laughs> you did well. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Guys, you would have laughed watching me behind the scenes before we came on with Kev. I'm, like, taking Matt on and off, on and off the screen <laughs> to make sure that I worked it properly. But anyway, we're here and it worked. Praise God. Well done. So, have you, Matt? Thanks again for jumping on. As I always say, this is just one of my favorite things to do. I love um, just flowing back and forward with you and seeing what the Holy Spirit does. So, thanks for jumping on. It's always a pleasure to do this with you, Lana. And uh, like you, I feel like I gain revelation from doing these things. So, I'm looking yeah. forward to what we're going to be, what's going to be downloaded on us today as well. Yeah, it's going to be really good. Um, can you take like maybe? 20 seconds and just tell people a little bit about you because as you know when you yeah. jumped on to our positioned in purity school there were a lot of familiar names and I was going to yeah. say faces but there were a lot that were like wow that was my first time that I've ever sat under Matt um, so if there's anyone on that's like who's Matt Beckenham <laughs> can you take 10 seconds and tell them who you are <laughs> yep yeah, I can so, yeah, so <clears throat> I'm Matt. I live in Sydney, Australia, married to Trish uh, and got three brilliant adult children. 
And I run a ministry right here in Sydney, like I'm a pastor of a local Baptist church here. And but I, the ministry that I run is very much about empowering and equipping people to hear the voice of God. And not only to hear it, but to fall in love with that voice. And so it's just a part of my heart's desire and passion for people to discover who they are in Jesus, their authority, their identity, and to be able to step out from those kinds of places. So, yeah, that's kind of who I am. That's kind of what I do. So good. And yes, to all of you that are saying right now that Matt is an incredible human being and a wonderful <laughs> man of God, I agree with you. <laughs> we, we had a bit of a, uh, a giggle in our purity school uh, before Matt came on because somebody mentioned in the comments that had been part of our Facebook lives and other online schools, they said, oh, the love of God that flows out of Matt. Look, if anybody's new here and you haven't sat under Matt's teaching before, bring your tissues. <laughs> <laughs> because God just moves in such a, a beautiful way that the common comment that I get is when I listen to Matt, I'm just so undone by the Father's heart and by the Father's love. So, uh, yeah, you guys are going to be in for a treat this morning. All right, so let's dive in. So, Matt, let's just, as we always do, like we don't plan anything like when we do things like this we go this is what I'm kind of feeling and let's see what the Holy Spirit does so how about we just start how about you start just sharing yeah. what's been stirring in your heart yeah well this topic for me is a, a really it's it's a for this moment I think refreshment and rivers are refreshing I think this is a kingdom uh, paradigm that's actually flowing that's probably a pun probably shouldn't use that one already <laughs> But it's actually flowing and overflowing already into many people. And even when I'm watching some of the, the comments coming up, people are already understanding that the Spirit's actually on this um, prior to this Facebook Live going, li going live. And I think that's really important for, for yourself and myself, Lana, because it feels like that we're actually in a really good flow if we're hearing this flow from around the globe as well. Yeah. But the season we're in, there's lots of people looking for refreshment. Uh, I think COVID for lots of people has been a really tough season. I know for many in churches, it's been a tough season. I know for many pastors, it's been a tough season. And, and now we're, we're faced with this moment of everything going back to, to some level of normality. And what does that look like, particularly when God has been revealing so much over the last 12 months and so for me it's like okay I feel like a kid in a candy store at times because yeah. we've got so much of what God has done and then how do we actually apply yeah. that back into the place and, and then when you sort of sent me this text last week and said how about we do something on the rivers of refreshment mm -hmm. for me Lana it was like that uh, cold glass of water and I love I love that concept uh, I love just mm -hmm. how in tune with the spirit you are and it's just a real joy to to do this back and forth sort of thing with you. Uh, and so the verses that God's had me in are in Isaiah 41 and where it speaks. If you guys, if anyone's got their Bibles, you can have a listen to these verses. This is verse 17 of Isaiah 41. It says, when the poor and needy search for water, there is none and their tongues are parched from thirst. When the Lord... When I, the Lord, will answer them, I, the, the God of Israel, will never abandon them. I will open up rivers for them on the high plateaus. I will give them fountains of water in the valleys. I will fill the desert with pools of water. Rivers fed by springs will flow across the parched ground. I will plant trees in the barren desert, the cedar, the acacia, the myrtle, the olive, the cypress, the fir, and the pine. I'm doing this so all who see this miracle will understand what it means, that it is the Lord who has done this, the Holy One of Israel who created it. Now, again, these are words of prophecy. These are words that are designed to create. And so, so often I find that we can read the Bible as just, oh, that's nice, that's cool, I, I love that. But these are actually words of prophecy. And, and when they were spoken, and it was like the Father saying, is there anyone who's willing to believe for these words and to step into this place? It's like when he said, I've promised you that this promised land, flowing a land of milk and honey, but then he was yeah. looking for the choice. He was looking for the yes. He was yeah. looking for people to go, yeah, I'm actually up for exactly what the Father is actually speaking. Now, when you read this, you think of the metaphor that it is, and you can see that when the people are poor and needy and then they search for water, how many people in this alive would go, yeah, that's that's actually me. That's, that's where I've been sitting. That's what uh, my experience mm -hmm. Well, Jesus is the one who calls himself the living water. In John chapter 7, he says, from his heart, living waters will flow. 
And I really sat in that yesterday just to think, you know, what does that actually mean for us? And, and how do I connect that with Isaiah? And this concept for Jesus being the living water and we come to the living water and we receive something for, for from him. Uh, it's just like John 4 where the woman comes to the well and and. And Jesus says, I am the living water. I am this one. And if you drink from this, you'll never thirst. And we mm -hmm. have this beautiful concept of what is this? Like it looks beautiful, but what is it? Well, in John 7, it says it's the Holy Spirit. And so mm -hmm. I think this coming time of refreshment is a releasing of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. across his people. And when I say this, it's not just a drip. It's not just a leak. It's actually a flow. And it's, again, when we see this flow actually happen, it will become a torrent uh, as the people of God start stepping in. And as they and as we believe for this, we actually start owning this conversation that the Father's got on this. And so in Isaiah 41, it says he's going to plant these trees in the barren desert. Now, that might sound strange to you, but he speaks of the, the seed of the acacia, the myrtle, the olive, the cypress, the fir, and the pine. And he... And then he sort of says, well, it's going to be a miracle. Now, I'm no botanist, so I don't know why that's a miracle for all those trees to be put together. But I did some research and I found that those all those trees can't coexist in the same place. Now, wow. in dreams and visions, trees are families. Mm. And so here. God drawing families from all over the place in different climates, different parts of the world, and he's causing them to grow in the one place. Now, there's one moment in the Bible where all of these oh. trees grow in the one place, and that's Eden. And yeah. in Eden, all of these trees happen. And again, in Eden, we have one river flowing into it that breaks into four different rivers. And I mm. think uh, Facebook Live might be the flowing into the breaking open across the Garden of Eden, where everything is going to be nourished, everything is going to be watered, everything is going to be fed. And where does this river flow from? <laughs> Straight from the throne of heaven. So I just want to believe yes. what we're about to do in these next moments, Lana, is going to mm -hmm. be a kingdom overflow that comes straight mm -hmm. from straight from Christ Himself. And the people will be refreshed as they step in and know just because they're different doesn't mean that's bad. That's That means you're unique. And God's going to draw us together to plant mm. us in Eden. So, yeah, that's where I want to start from. Oh, I love that. And, you know, any conversation that we have, you know, around Eden just <laughs> and the garden just like sets my spirit doing backflips because that's just, yeah, we've you know, we've talked a lot about that, but I really, I really love that. And I love that you were talking about, um, you know, the river that flows from the throne, you know, this morning we were texting back and forth and I said, oh, I love this scripture revelation about the river that surrounds the throne of, of God. And, uh, and it reminded me as you were talking just then that about an encounter I had with the Lord recently, and he was showing me a lot of people in the body that were really weary. They were really, um, they were feeling dry. They were feeling like they have been in this kind of fight mode continually and I heard the voice of the father and he said I will refresh you from many directions and when he said those words I cannot actually articulate in the English language the level of um, or the depth to the love of God that I felt. It was like in a moment the Lord was saying, you know, my eyes are upon you. I recognize that, you know, you're tired and you're weary, but I'm not only going to, like it's not, like you said, it's not just a drip, like I am going to lavish, like yeah. it was this sense of, of lavishing, of overflow. And the Holy Spirit began to show me, you know, the river of God that is going to flow, the Holy Spirit, where the Lord will use many different things to bring refreshment to his people and that there was coming a, a moment of encounter where I will encounter Jesus in as I sit down and have a conversation with a friend of mine and I walk away and I feel like I've had that cold glass of water or in a moment where I'm sitting with my kids, like I've had a moment where I've encountered the Lord and he's refreshed me in that moment. And there was just such a strong sense in my spirit as the Lord spoke that, that not only was he bringing a refreshing that was going to, um, you know, bring people that, that place into that place where, okay, I don't feel so heavy laden and weary anymore, but actually I, I'm bubbling over, like I'm actually so 
full that I'm feeling like I can just pour out, like I can like I can see him move and flow through me. I just I'm not in a place where I feel like I'm scraping at the bottom of the barrel. And I've just I've had this um, these words in my mind since last year. And the Lord kept saying these words. He kept saying, um, I haven't created my people um, to barely survive. I've created my people to thrive. Mm -hmm. And as I was looking uh, this morning, you know, at, at various scriptures, which we'll kind of jump in and out of, I kept feeling the Father's heart that in this refreshment that God is wanting he, to strengthen and infuse his people with, with such a, a hope and such a power and such a strength that comes by the Holy Spirit um, that really refreshes their hearts and refreshes their souls. And so I want to jump into, um, let me have a look, Jeremiah 31.25. Um, I actually was sitting with the Lord the other day and I said, Lord, what's on your heart today? And all of a sudden I heard this scripture and I thought, I don't know that scripture. And so I opened my Bible and it says, Jeremiah 31, 25, for I will satisfy the weary soul and every languishing soul I will replenish. And and I just, I, I really feel like right now that for those of you that are watching that are like, you know what, I really, I can really... Um, like identify with that scripture, like my soul is weary. Mm -hmm. I want to encourage you that the eyes of the Lord are upon you. And as I was preparing for this morning, I said, Lord, show me, show me something. And, uh, and I'm going to explain this because for those of you that um, I have little kids, like my youngest is two, so <laughs> the Lord uses, you know, different things that in, in the language that I will understand, right? So one of my, my kids has what is called a water table. And it's a little table, it's a plastic little, I don't know, like square plastic table with little compartments and you fill it with water and they he can stand there for hours and play with this little water table. There's like little instruments in there that can pour water and a wheel and it's just like amazing for a two-year-old. But the interesting thing was this morning, as I said, Lord, can you show me something? He said, Lana, I'm setting up a water table for my people. And I was like, oh. And in a moment, I was struck by Psalm 23, verse 5. Now, I know that we know this scripture very well, but I want to read it to you out of the Passion Translation. And what does it say? You have become my delicious feast, even when my enemies dare to fight. You anoint me with the fragrance of your Holy Spirit. You give me all I can drink of you until my cup overflows. And in other translations, you know, it says, you set a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And as I'm watching this, I said, Lord, like, explain the water table to me. And he said to me, Lana, I have set up a table for my people. He said, we're in the midst of you know, all the things that may oppose and all of the circumstances and, and the opposition and whatever it is that has come in, in the last while and has wearied my people. He said, I've set up a table for my people to come and sit and to drink of me. And it doesn't say here, you can drink, uh, sorry, you give me all I can drink of you until I'm a quarter full. It actually says, you give me all I can drink of you until my cup overflows and the thing with this water table is like my little boy will stick his face in and he'll drink from this table but it's also a place of fun it's a place of joy it's a place where like he will just giggle and laugh and you know he's just playing by himself and I felt there was something that the Lord wanted to release this morning that not only is the Lord setting up your own personal water table, right? In the presence of, of your enemies, the Lord is setting up this water table so you can drink from him and drink from the Holy Spirit. But some of you need your joy restored. Some of you need that place of fun restored with the Lord because the you, you've come into a place where you've, you've been in a battle for so long that it's actually... Um, for some of you, I feel like you may have even said to the Lord, wow, Lord, that, that place of joy that I had in your presence, like I just, I don't have it anymore because I've become so battle weary. Well, today, friends, I want to encourage you that the Lord is setting up that water table and he's inviting you to come and sit and to drink. And what does that look like? It looks like listening to the voice of the Lord. It, it, it looks like asking the Lord for revelation. It looks like asking God to minister to your soul. 
but you know get yourself in the spirit in front of that watering table because it's available to you yeah love that uh, from my engineering background, water tables are a real thing uh, when you're when you're building because you need to know where the water table is to how far down it is before you strike water. Wow! Oh wow! And, uh, here in Sydney, over the last couple of weeks, uh, we've had so much water uh, that dams have overflowed, um, parklands wow. become uh, absolutely saturated, and I love the concept that what you're saying is that Jesus wants to overflow us. Mm. Um, there's no there's no language in the Bible that's not overflow or full or abundant. That's yeah. what he does. That's that's his plan. That's his desire uh, yeah. for us. The question that so many of us ask, well, what does that look like for me? How does that actually appear inside of my life? Mm. Um, because I'm sure there's lots of people just going, yep, yeah, I'm actually up for this. Okay, let's see what we do now. Yeah. Now, if I take, for example, John 4, Jesus comes to the well and what he's doing spiritually is raising the water level she mm -hmm. comes and says hey uh, he says to her i want to drink she, she goes good luck with that you've got no bucket um that's how it, that's how an aussie would say that you know that right <laughs> good luck you've got no bucket um but what jesus was doing was raising the spiritual water level and she kept drawn she was drawn to it and so there was no part of the conversation that she felt shamed or ignored or uh, put down or judged. Uh, every part of the conversation seemed to draw her closer and closer and so close that she decided that she needed to get whole community to draw closer to this uh, water table that's rising. And so mm -hmm. what happened? Well, they came to a place of belief because Jesus was the one who raises the water table that is around us and so that people can come for a drink. Now, here's the thing. Christians... We carry the presence of Christ. He lives within us. And again, like you said, Lana, it's not 10% of Jesus that lives within us. Mm. It's the full manifestation of Christ that's in each believer, which yeah. means that when we come into conversations with people, we're actually raising the water table. We're drawing the water of life to these people because we mm. carry the water of life. And so often when we feel dry, it's like we it's if we sit down with someone else who's carrying that water of life, that Holy Spirit, and it's just expressing it, you know, and mm -hmm. freely giving it. You walk away from that going, gee, why do I feel lighter? Why do I feel yeah. happier? Why do I feel more joy right now? And those revelations that guy or that woman was giving to me, wow. Like mm -hmm. what happens is we are being refreshed. Yeah. Why? Because we are, we are the representation of Christ on the planet we carry the spirit of christ on the planet so just like mm. with this, this that woman who comes out of uh, the samaritan woman jesus is raising the water table around her and he's not yeah. stopping that water from flowing he's not going you know when she said you've got no bucket he's like well bad luck you're not going to get what i've got he didn't do that <laughs> He actually went past that place of offense, like which I think is so beautiful when Jesus mm. goes past that place to offer her something that she could not even imagine that she needed. Mm. She thought she was coming for something. She came away with something else. And I think this is so much about what Isaiah and Jeremiah are on about. There's so many expectations that each of us have, but Jesus mm. has this way of actually wanting to break open that place of expectation to show us there's something of the kingdom of God that li lives so deeply within us that supernaturally mm. he's just bringing out of us. And again, it's the things that we're starting to look for that we're not actually going to expect. Like in yeah. Isaiah 42, it says, I've been silent. Yes, I've restrained myself, but now like a woman in labor, I will cry and groan and pant. I, I will level the mountains and hills and I will block all of that greenery i'll turn the rivers into dry land i'll dry up all the pools but then i will lead israel down a new path yeah. guiding them al along an unfamiliar way i read that <laughs> this morning and i thought is this not for the moment that we're oh, in wow. that this unfamiliar way that many of us are now you've been prophesying to, to the pioneers for the last few weeks and mm. i love the you've been speaking into that because so often pioneers are looking for those unfamiliar ways and there's people going no, no don't go there don't yeah. don't don't go there what are you doing that for we've never done that before is that actually going to work and again 
think these are like little voices of snakes that are talking to us that are actually diverting us or distracting us away from this great river of life that the Father is drawing us to. And mm -hmm. I wanted to speak to all the pioneers that are listening today into this yeah. Facebook Live. When you hear that phrase, it's too good to be true, it, when you hear that phrase, it, not those new thoughts that you're thinking aren't right, I want you just to persist. I want you to go past mm -hmm. that and look for the ones that the Father is rising up around you that yeah. are empowered to walk with you. Throughout Scripture, we have all these concepts of relationship that come around the people of God at the right time. And so yeah. at this point in time, as we're pioneering this new thing and going down this yeah. unfamiliar way into this place where God is saying, I'm going to do this and it's going to be miraculous, I'm wondering mm -hmm. if we are looking for the miracle. The Samaritan woman was not looking for the miracle, but Jesus was the miracle or Jesus is the miracle. And again, yeah. each of us who are listening to this Facebook Live, you guys are, and I want to say that just so categorically, mm -hmm. you are the miracle. Nothing yeah. disqualifies you from being the miracle because Christ lives within you. He has forgiven everything. He has redeemed. He has reconciled you to God. Mm -hmm. he, you are the miracle and you carry the water of life that jesus speaks to wow that's so good matt and i <laughs> i love this because it just it, it so ties in with um something else that i was seeing this morning and it was actually around um to do with kind of the pioneers and so i want to jump on that because i i really feel like as you were speaking I could feel the Lord just pouring refreshment onto pioneers um, because I, like you would have seen in the words I've released recently, I've really felt like the heart of the Father is wanting to encourage um, those that are really pioneering. He wants to encourage the whole body of Christ. But this particular word was he wanted to encourage those that are going and looking for the new ways, right, the, the unprecedented pathways, the, the ways that we've never been before and you've, you've received it. A vision of the Lord you've received a word from the Lord um, and then all of a sudden it felt like everything just came against you right like Matt was saying whether it was the voices you know that were saying oh don't do that you know why are you doing that we've never done that before um, but I want to speak to those of you um, right now because I have actually a coffee with Jesus episode coming out it may already be out now today but in the middle of this episode that I was recording um, I, the Lord took me into a vision and I saw the Lord um, handing what looked like marching orders and they were marching orders into the new ways that God is moving. They were into pioneering pathways and all of a sudden as um, the marching orders were released, um, I saw this, this opposition that came against many and there was this weariness and then there was a doubt that started coming, a doubt on have I heard from God, do I have what it takes, you know, there was a doubt coming against identity. Um, there was a whole heap of things but the reason that I'm bringing this up is because what I actually saw was that the Lord was saying right now um, many of you are actually at a crossroads, like you're at a point where the Lord is saying, hey, um, I'm leading you into this new way. I'm leading you down a pathway that you've never been before. And you may feel like there's been all of these different battles and oppositions and things that have come against you to stop you from moving in those pioneering pathways. But in this moment, I'm actually um, bringing a, a supernatural refreshment to you like you've never never experienced before. And what I actually saw was in the pioneering pathways, um, as you walked in obedience to the Lord, you were creating a well. And it was a well for his presence. It was a well for the Holy Spirit. And people were coming and beginning to drink from this well. But as uh, other people were coming and drinking and as you were building with God, you were actually yourself being refreshed by the Holy Spirit, by the very well that you were creating with the Lord for others to come and drink from. And so for those of you that are in that moment of pioneering and you've heard, uh, you've had a vision from God, the Lord showed you a new way, a new blueprint, and all of a sudden you're like, wow, I heard this thing from God. I was so excited and now I'm exhausted and I'm weary. I want to encourage you that as you continue to follow Jesus and you walk in obedience, that 
the Lord is going to draw people that are going to come to the well that you are building, but also the well that's inside of you, right? The, the rivers that are within you, that the enemy is actually, um, the enemy is actually very intimidated by you and who you are because of the Holy Spirit living inside of you, who the Lord has created you to be. And I find it very interesting right now that so many people are being, um, being attacked in an area of identity and they're being attacked in an area of um of their their calling and their destiny because right now we are at a, a point that i believe god is releasing uh his people into new places of um of destiny and new places of partnering with him and building with him and i'm going to say this and i'll hand back to you matt but um, about three months ago, in the middle of the night, I heard the Lord almost audibly. It was that loud. And he said, Lana, the enemy is coming to weary and to weary my people. And whenever the Lord speaks something like that, I'm like, okay, Lord, thank you for the heads up. But how how do we position ourselves, right? Because we're not victims and we are we are victors in Christ. And what I really feel like is very important right now is to really be in that place of holding on to what God has said. Now you may say, yeah, Lana, I've heard you say that a thousand times. You always say that. You're always talking about rehearsing the rhema. You're always talking about meditating on the word of God. Yes, because this is this is your life. This is the place where I believe that God is going to refresh you. And in the last couple of days, the Lord has drawn me to, um, to books, like I'm about to read a book uh, I haven't read it yet. It's this one here. It's called Ancient Paths, Discover Rediscovering Delight in the Word of God by Corey Russell. But I just show that to you just to say that I, I feel like there is a, a deep well of refreshment for many of you um, that are feeling weary, even like as you sit in the Word of God. Like I, I even see right now that some of you may be watching and you're like, Lana, I've been sitting and I've been reading the Word and I feel like I've gone from rivers of revelation so much that I can't keep up with what God is releasing to actually now I'm reading the word and it's dry and I'm feeling like I'm not being ministered to. If that's you, I want to speak this word to you today because before this broadcast, I saw the tidal wave of the Spirit of God and it was crashing over people's lives. And in that tidal wave of his presence and, his, and the Holy Spirit, was the the manner of God it was the word of God and so I want to prophesy over you that you are going to have a moment of encounter as you continue to sit in the word of God that there is coming a moment where God is going to speak something and not only is that word out of the mouth of the Lord going to bring such deep refreshment to you but it's also going to open up I just see it. I keep seeing the words realm of revelation, that a new realm of revelation is going to open up for you and you will dive deep into the river of God, into the depths of revelation of what God is wanting to speak to you through the word. And some of you are about to have your dreams in the night restored. Some of you have said, what's happened? I was dreaming. I'm not dreaming now. What's happened? Your dreams are going to be restored, but not only restored, God is going to give you greater clarity in the night hours to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. Yeah. And this is where for everyone watching to test the words that we're saying to see that clarity as well. Yeah. Because, again, the words, and this is what for Lana and I we do a lot of, you listen to prophetic words from around the globe and you listen to how they, they test the very words that we feel like we're receiving too. Yeah. The other day I was sitting with uh, about 40 uh, people who I'm training in the prophetic and the phrase, I am not alone, uh, was repetitive in these in these wow. people. I am not alone. Now, when that's spoken to you, it's like you are not alone. To mm. receive it, it becomes I am not alone. And for mm. some of you, that's going to be a prophetic statement, even when you do feel alone, to say, mm. I am not alone. Now, we know the presence of the living God lives within us. But again, it's when we gather with God's people who are listening for his voice that we discover that the words that we're hearing are being affirmed by the words of the people who surround us. Mm -hmm. And I love how you gave us some strategy there, Lana, because Satan is attacking. He will attack your identity, which then will dismantle your authority. 
And if he's yeah. attacked your identity and dismantled your authority, you'll walk around the planet not knowing who you are and therefore you won't understand what you're here to do. Yeah. And so he does that by distracting you. He, uh, and again, uh, the, the distractions that are here, we are weary, as like Lana was saying, and sometimes we can feel like the, the tidal wave is weariness, not, not just yeah. anything else. It feels like that's come upon us. Yeah. But again, weariness, um, again, is something that Satan will, will push upon God's people and it stops us also from even resting. It's, it takes us out of our design. And when yeah. we go out of our design, we we lose the concept of our plan. And, and yeah. again, I just know, and I, Lana, you and I have done uh, chats before on the concept of rest. Uh, but yeah. again, refreshment and rest for me, these happen simultaneously. They happen at the same time. And for mm -hmm. me, they happen when I'm sitting and listening and being with God's people. You know, this past weekend, I, I was with a church um, and it was just this beautiful, okay, beautiful time where I was ministering into a session and we had like an altar call at the end of it. And mm -hmm. it took a while for this altar call to happen uh, until Finally, one young man walked up the front, and I assume he was, in, he was a teenager, and his mm. shoulders were slumped, and he was looking down. And I said, what is it I can pray for you? And he looks up at me, and he's got tears in his eyes, and he says, I need courage. Oh. I just need courage. Mm -hmm. My heart broke for this, this young man, and I thought, you know what, this is the moment. If there's only mm. one moment I'm here for a whole weekend, this is the moment. Yeah. And again, so I pray for this young man that God would open up his eyes and give to him the understanding of the mm -hmm. courage that he has actually placed within him. Because for a person to believe they don't lack, they, they lack courage, it's to me that says that they feel that they lack the Holy Spirit because I think courage is an overflow of what the Holy Spirit is doing. Yeah. And so I, I pray for this young man to not only be filled, to, to, I know he's already filled, but to overflow with the Holy Spirit. The next morning, we're having a, a time of testimony inside of it. And I'm just calling people to say, hey, what's Jesus done for you this weekend? And eventually this young man stands up and across everyone, he says, God has given to me courage. No. And he stood up with his head raised. And you yeah. see something of what the kingdom is actually doing. He yeah. has been refreshed because he has lent in. He has discovered a truth. We've yeah. been joined together in prayer. And before you know it, he's been celebrated by the people that surround him now again this is what we pray for the that young man as these days go on because again what will satan try to do yeah he'll say you got no courage like what are you yeah. talking about that was just a camp and it was a good time do you really think that you have courage well yeah. again every word of satan can be conquered with the word of the father and yeah. every word of the father tells me that he has given to me life in all of its abundance he has mm -hmm. given to me more than enough as the bible would say he has given to me to the overflow and it's again we are not about running out we are about running over and again for me this concept of time that we're in where weariness is actually a language in a conversation what that needs to switch to is the whole place of refreshment so yeah. where is it that i can find these places of refreshment who mm. is it that god has placed in front of me that flows yeah. with the river of life and for those yeah. people are the ones i want to sit with and you will discover that those people will receive from you so it's not just you sitting down with someone going water me water me water me it's yeah. it's you actually then overflowing as well and that's how Lana, for you and i for years it's yeah. been a process we sit down we talk we flow we talk we flow yeah. we actually use that language but that's yeah. the kingdom at work and it refreshes us and so for both you and i we get off a session like this we go ah, that's that's yeah. well, that's, that, that's awesome like that's yeah. but just the design of the kingdom of god it was right back there in eden Adam was created, but it was not good that he was alone. He needed mm. someone to flow with. And again, that's where I think um, Genesis 2 is not, not purely about marriage. It's about relationship. It's about yeah. relationship standing with. And I think in this time, in this season of the kingdom where the pioneers are going out, Jesus didn't send pioneers out alone. He sent them out in pairs. And he sent them out in pairs so that when one got weary, another could stand. When one doubted, another could believe. When one feared, another one would faith all over that situation or love all over that situation. This is the pattern of the kingdom of God. He raises people up so that there are no lone rangers here amongst mm -hmm. us. We are designed to be in community and we are refreshed in community mm -hmm. as well. Oh, that's so good, Matt. And I love, like, I just, I love the way the Holy Spirit works. I was actually talking with one of my children last night and, uh, and one thing the Lord told me to speak over one of my sons 
was these words, you know you're not alone? Do you know you are not alone? In the midst of a moment that they were having, a battle that they were having, I said, look into my eyes. And they're like looking away. I said, no, 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 look into my eyes. And they looked into my eyes and I said, listen, you are not alone. And I began to speak, you know, you know, mum and dad, I'm here with you. Dad's here with you, you know, but Jesus is with you. And you know how many angels are with you? And just speaking into the midst of battle um, and weariness and, you know, and just a lot of emotion that they were feeling to speak that truth that says, hey, you're not alone. And, you know, dad and I are here to hold up your arms and we're here to, you know, encourage you and to, to fight with you and to, you know, believe God with you. And in those moments, like in that moment last night, like it just to me again, Matt, it's exactly what you were just saying. Like it reminded me again that especially in those times where you know, the battle is really intense or we feel really weary, we can often feel like, wow, I am so on my own, <laughs> you know, like I am so on my own. And I think even right now, um, I mean, part of the enemy's uh, plan all the time, I think, is to, to separate and to isolate. But even more lately, I have been feeling as I felt the push of this weariness um, against God's people, I felt like this this push against God's people to isolate, to pull back and to to just, you know, go and hide in a cave and go, oh, like I just, I don't even, I don't even want to do relationship. Like I just, I'm so, I'm so tired. I'm so, I'm so battle weary. I'm so exhausted. But actually, you know, in those places, and I feel like right now some of you actually need to reach out, that some of you need to actually reach out to the people that you know that the Lord has placed in your life and go, hey, you know what? I need to be really real right now. I'm really struggling. Like I'm really struggling and I need you to stand with me and to pray with me or to encourage me. I was actually listening to a podcast yesterday and they were talking about in the dry times and the weary times, the girl was telling her testimony. She said, you know, when I was at my my lowest, she said, I was so weary. She said, I couldn't even, I found it hard to read scripture. She said, I found it really hard. She said, but I thought, no, I need the word of God in me every day. She said, and I recognized that I needed relationship. She said, and took everything in me to text one of my friends and say, I'm really struggling. Would you mind doing something for me? Would you text me a verse a day? Would you just text message me a scripture just for the next two weeks to help carry me through? And she said it was so hard because it, it, it brought this place of vulnerability. Like I had to go, wow, I really need someone to stand with me right now. She said that every day that that text message came through, she said, was like a, a moment of refreshment that the Lord gave me in those times where I just sat. I'm like, okay, today, Ephesians 3.20. She's like, I couldn't do large portions of scripture, but I could grab Ephesians 3.20 and just let it rumble around in my heart and my mind every day. She said, but it also built relationships. Uh, in in my life in those weary times, so I think Matt, that's I think that's such a, a word for a lot of people right now. Um, I know for myself personally, if things get very very intense. My knee jerk response is to pull back and hide, but no, like the Lord's really challenging me, even personally. Hey, Lana, you know, in those moments of overwhelm, I've got people around you to hold up your arms, to pray with you, to encourage you, and so for those of you that are in that really pressured moment right now you're feeling very weary if you haven't reached out to people around you that you know that the Lord has brought into your life I would encourage you to do that and have people yeah. standing with you to really love on you and to speak life to you yeah yeah I, I think that's such a good word too like I think people will follow love and yeah. again wherever love is you'll follow I think that's why Jesus had so many people surrounding him so often because he mm. was love like pe people just yeah. drawn to him like the Bible says yeah. from all over the world they were drawn to him uh, and again it's something we see today when we know and see a loving person we can't help but be drawn to them but again as you and I have spoken often yeah. we carry that very love but fear mm. drives things away yeah fear will drive people away that's right. And again, it's a, it's a strategy of the devil to have, like exactly like you said, Lana, to mm -hmm. isolate us and to have us feeling that we are all alone. Yeah. The one time when Jesus seemed to have despaired on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Uh, and again, it's such a uh, oh. it's a chilling phrase to hear the, the Lord Jesus say that himself. But what had happened? 
everyone had deserted him. Yeah. Everyone had deserted him. Why? Yeah. Because fear, fear likes to drive our friendships away from us. Uh, but love will overcome that very fear that's there. And yeah. this is, again, it's a, it's a kingdom design principle. It's the way we've been created. And if we start flowing with that place of design, with love driving fear, we're actually going to yeah. see that people are drawn to us as well. And the Bible uses that word a lot. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. And mm. he is the one who is love. And so, again, we are designed as humans to be drawn to our creator. Yes. And like Again, even if you're not a believer, we are drawn to understand. We are drawn to a curiosity. We are drawn to a great question. And some people might call that God. Some people might not. But I mm. might call it Jesus. Like he is, he is our creator. He is the lover of our soul. And I'm drawn to him. And as I've been drawn to him to hear his heart, to yeah. know his heart, the less fear then controls the choices and decisions that are surrounding me. And yes. so it's again in those times when you're feeling alone and you're not feeling love, it's exactly like you're saying, Lana, be drawn to the people that God has placed in your life for such yeah. a time as this. And again, yeah. it's a, I know it's an overused verse, that one, but I think in these moments of relationship, it is not. It is the moment in time when we go, you know, when I, you start thinking about a person, you go, I might just call that person and they go, hey, I was just thinking mm -hmm. about you. That yeah. is a divine drawing that's actually occurring inside of that place. It's mm -hmm. like a prayer that started to be prayed. And when that person yeah. says, I was just thinking about you, it's like this affirmation that flows in back into a person's soul. What is yeah. that? That's refreshment. Yeah. right there so yeah. for anyone watching think about that think about yeah. somebody else in your life right now that you love yeah send them a message get in contact with them have a cup of coffee and watch the power of the holy spirit mm -hmm. overflow in those moments and mm -hmm. as you do it testify to it Sh yeah. declare what god has done and it, again yeah. when we testify thing to things i think faith breeds faith and so we our faith will grow as we hear and listen to the testimonies that God is placing in front of yeah. us. Yeah, that's so good, Matt. And I, I just want to comment on someone's comment. I know it's gone now, so I'm sorry. I don't know who it was that said it, but somebody commented and said, I always feel bad for reaching out to people because I feel like then I'm not relying on the Lord himself. Um, and I, I want to say to you, yes, like, you know, the Lord is our source. You know, he is, he is our life. He is the place, you know, the living in the secret place. That's, you know, our ultimate place. But God has created us for relationship. You know, God has designed us to be um, in community and to be in that place of, of relationship. So I don't, um, I'm not reaching out to somebody, you know, in a codependent way to, you know, try and draw from them something that's unhealthy. My everything that I need, my life comes from Jesus, but I recognize that I am created to have relationship and I'm created in those moments to reach out and go, hey, would you pray for me? And recognizing that the Lord has something that he will minister to me through somebody else as, as he flows through me to minister to someone else. And so I just want to encourage you because I think sometimes I used to think that many, many years ago. Um, I used to think, oh, I can't reach out to people because if I reach out that I don't really have faith in God, like I'm actually relying on man and not relying on Jesus. But the more and more that I have drawn close to the heart of God, the more I have seen the beauty of community, that God has created us to be in community. Yes, recognizing the Lord is my first love. I get everything that I need from him. But also I live in a place of relationship where I'm connecting with, you know, brothers and sisters in Christ. So, Matt, do you have anything you want to speak into that? Well, I think too, like it's not everyone that we trust everything to. Yes. And like for you and I. Oh, like, I've learned sure, that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we learned that one the hard way. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's one I've not found out to learn it the easy way. But I'm yeah. looking down this list of people, and even just the square that I see here, uh, like there's Rebecca, there's Nick, there's Sophie, there's Courtney, there's Dara, and these are people that have walked with Trish and I, like walked mm -hmm. with, and they've listened to some of our mess and they've gone, yeah, we're still up for that. And we keep yeah. on. And we and it's this is divine uh, connection that happens. But again, not everyone that walks into your life needs to hear all the stuff of your life. Yes. Allow trust to develop and yes. grow. 
And it's again, love starts from a place, but as the Bible says, love gets deeper. And as the Apostle Paul says, you will never get to the full depth of God's love, which is both mind boggling and beautiful at the same time, because mm. it means that the more you love, the deeper you go. And that's a never ending. Uh, that's a never ending. Well, it's the mm. same deal for us in relationship. And so like Lana, you and I have known each other for a lot of years. And yeah. can you imagine what it's going to be like in 10 years time? Can you imagine yeah. what it's going to be like in 20 mm. years time? Yeah. These are the beautiful wonders of the kingdom as we sow, mm. so we reap. And that's what Paul says, you reap what you sow. So if mm. you sow love, you're going to reap love. If you sow peace, you're going to reap peace. Mm. That sort of concept for me that it shows that this beautiful concept of refreshment, yeah. it's actually God has placed those seeds of refreshment actually mm. in us, the water of life actually in us. And it's like the revelation of God, I've got this. Yeah, yeah, yeah you actually do. Yeah. You, you mean I've got all of that? That's exactly what I'm saying. And it's never going to run out is the other thing that I'm going to say too, because, again, we are not designed for a partial feeling. We're always designed for an overflow. Mm, yeah, that's so good. And I, I think, you know, I, I really want to, um, I know we've gone for a while, so we will we'll wrap up, but I really want you to hear that today. Like I felt that really strongly, like that word um, that I saw in that encounter I had with the God, with the Lord, the word lavish, you know, that the Lord wants to lavish refreshment um, upon his people, that it's it's overflow. It's more than enough above and beyond, right? Even if we think of, you know, Ephesians 3.20, now unto him who is able to do a little bit, no, 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 exceedingly, yep. right, abundantly, more than you could ever hope, imagine, or dream. Like, my goodness me, that's one of my favourite verses in the Bible. Like, if you actually sit down and really Think about that, like, you know, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than that you could hope or imagine. Like that's, you know, I have some pretty big, you know, dreams before the Lord and, you know, different things. So he, he is the God of abundance. And so I, I just want to encourage you as we um, as we wrap up that if you've been feeling weary, and, and I think, Matt, if you wouldn't mind, I think maybe we could end by praying um, for everybody but I, I just want to encourage you that um, that there is a there's a water table that is being set before you to sit and to drink and and for the the pioneering and to encounter the Lord until your cup overflows. There's a rest that is found uh, at the table with the Lord. There is a, a rest that is found in His presence and where. You may have experienced opposition on every side. That the Lord is is breaking that confinement, and uh, and He's lifting off the weariness that has been like I keep seeing it actually like a when you go for an X ray and they put that heavy you know that that blanket. It's not a blanket. What is it like? <laughs> I don't know, that heavy, like, thing, <laughs> thing, yeah, <laughs> over you, you know, and it's really heavy. Like, you lie there and you go, oh, my gosh, like, it, like, plasters you to the, the table. But I see it like a, a really heavy, like, the, the the weariness has been, like, this heavy weighted blanket that's just kind of pressing so many of you, feeling like it's just suffocating you and confining you and, and really stopping your momentum. I want to prophesy over you today that I just see the hands of the Lord lifting off that weariness. I see the Lord um, just ministering to you and speaking words of life and lifting off and breaking um, that heaviness. And one other thing I'm going to say very quickly, I feel like some of you may be watching and this weariness has come and it's it's actually um, come so quickly and so heavily. You've actually been saying to the Lord, this isn't characteristic of me. Like this isn't, I don't usually feel so, so heavy. And I don't usually feel like some of you may have even felt like, oh, my gosh, I feel like I'm actually in depths of depression and that's not my norm. And I want to encourage you. The Lord spoke to me a couple of uh, weeks ago and he said to me, Lana, many of my people are taking on heaviness and weariness as their own, where it's actually a, a spiritual opposition. And so I, if that's you, while I was speaking, you're like, yeah, that really resonates with me. 
I want to encourage you, don't take it on as your own, but grab like the word of God says in Timothy, like grab your prophetic words and, you know, and wage war with that which God has spoken. Declare what the Lord has has said and, and stand up against that thing because I think that there's something that I'm seeing around alignment um, and agreement that the enemy is looking for you to go, wow, there's something really wrong with me. Like I'm feeling so heavy and so weary. I can tell you, you know, personally, I've spoken to so many people lately that have been in this place. Lots of people are having dreams about it, about this oppressive uh, attack of the enemy that's coming to weary and to, to really oppress God's people. But greater is he. And so I believe that we're in a moment where the Lord is refreshing. He is breaking that attack of confinement and he's drawing you to that, that water table to, uh, to drink deep and to have fun with the Lord and splash in the water um, of his presence. Hallelujah. Well, Matt, do you want to um, pray and then I'll, I'll wrap up once you're, once yeah, you're done? Sure. For sure. You happy if I do some Absolutely. kind of activation? Is that all right? Please, yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> Love <you>. it. <laughs> Okay, so if you haven't prayed with me before, I always love using my imagination to pray. And I love setting up uh, just a, a simple construct for us to use our imaginations with. Now, if you're familiar with doing this and you'd want to do your own thing, that is very cool. Um, if you're unfamiliar with using your imagination in picture form, it's very much like using words, but instead of looking for a word in my imagination, I'm looking for a picture. So I thought with the, the concept of Jesus calling, call, calling us to the water table that we might start in prayer of imagining Jesus sitting at a well. And for me, I love to close my eyes and imagine this. So uh, how about we just close our eyes and allow Jesus to give us a picture of him sitting by a well. As you imagine that, I want you to feel with your senses the ground, the weather, there might even be a breeze. And just imagine yourself walking out to that, that well. And you see this man sitting at the well. And yep, he's got no bucket. And you've got the only bucket around. Every part of this vision is of the woman who comes out from that uh, Samaritan town and she's carrying a story on his shoulders and you guys know the story. She's been married five times and the guy she's got at the moment is not the one she's married to. So she's carrying a story. And Jesus is looking for a bucket. And so maybe the, the story you carry is the bucket that is in your hands. And Jesus is looking for a vessel to carry the water of life. As Jesus asked you for the bucket in your imagination, I invite you to hand it to him. Allow him to fill the bucket. Again, there's going to be more in this bucket than you can possibly drink. This wee moment when Jesus fills that bucket with his spirit and then he invites you to drink of the very water that he carries. And in that place of drinking deep, you know when you drink a very cold glass of water and you can feel it go down through your body? Use your imagination to encounter a moment where the Holy Spirit flows into your body. Two of the disciples said that that felt like fire when they were talking with Jesus. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if the living water is hot or whether it's cold, but whatever it does, it is designed to renew you, to refresh you, to strengthen you, to give you great courage. I wonder if in the story, and I don't know if this to be true or not, but the woman left her bucket at the well. I wonder if you could leave your story at the well 
where Jesus can lift off the guilt and the shame today. The loneliness, the despair, some of that weariness. And in its place, he'll put onto you the robe of righteousness. To know that you have been created for such a time as this. Where this Facebook Live and the things that we have spoken can be the words of the Holy Spirit that has uh, quenched a thirst that is within you. And so, Jesus, as we come to a close on an activation, I just thank you for the ones who have come to that well and offered up to you their bucket and that you have filled it to overflow and that today, Jesus, a miracle has occurred where lives have been restored and renewed. And so, Jesus, for those who have drunk deeply, may they take the water back into their families. For those who are wanting to see loved ones saved or loved ones healed, mm -hmm. Jesus, may that water flow from them today. The Holy Spirit flow to them today. For those who are in loss, for those who are, uh, are waiting and begging you for a promise to be fulfilled, Father, I pray that that water will flow into those places today. May things change in the natural as they shift in the supernatural. Jesus, may eyes be open today to see the Saviour who sits at the well. And as this woman's eyes were opened, as the disciples' eyes were opened on that road to Emmaus, when they encountered Christ, may today your presence encounter each one of us. Mm. And overflow us. Refresh us. In Jesus' name. Mm. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for this time together, Lord. I thank you for every person that has joined live, Lord, and everyone that is going to watch later. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your refreshing. Holy Spirit, we thank you that there is fullness of joy in your presence, Lord. And God, right now I pray for every person, Lord, that is feeling battle-weary, that has been under attack, those that are feeling dry. Lord God, I thank you for your Holy Spirit that is just continually ministering to their hearts, Lord God. I pray that as they draw uh, close to you, Lord, as they draw to the water table, Lord, as they draw close to the well, Lord, as they draw close to the table that you have set before them in the presence of their enemies, Lord God, I thank you that their cup overflows. And, Lord, today and for the rest of this week, Lord, I pray that they would have encounters with you, Jesus, and encounters in your word, Lord, that as you speak, Lord, as you reveal your heart, Lord God, that there would be supernatural refreshment, there would be supernatural healing, there will be supernatural deliverance. I thank you, Lord, for I see the words instant healing and instant deliverance. Lord, I thank you for moments of miracles this week. Lord, where things suddenly come into alignment with the word of God, they suddenly come into alignment with that which you have spoken. Mm -hmm. And Lord, I thank you that, Lord, that, that, that breakthrough is imminent. Lord, I thank you that breakthrough is imminent. For many that have been, been standing and been waiting and there has been such a heavy opposition and a heavy pressure, I thank you, Lord, for a refreshment that I see not only in your presence, Lord, and not only in encountering your heart, but I thank you, Lord, for a refreshment that is coming in the manifestation and the fulfillment of that which you have promised. I thank you, Lord, that you are not a man that you should lie, God, that you are faithful and I thank you, Lord, that this week for many there, are, there is going to be refreshment in the manifestation and the revelation of your faithfulness. So we bless you, Lord. We give you all the glory and all the praise. We love you, Jesus. It's all for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us. I am just going to click on this thing and see whether I can work out how to share Matt's. Let me see, Matt. Here we go. Is that right? Mm, there we go. <laughs> yep, there it is. The ridiculously long email address. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I encourage you guys, if you don't already, to follow along with Matt. You can see there on uh, on Facebook and um, Matt, uh, the prophetic mentoring is an email for if people are interested. Is that right? In in yeah. jumping on prophetic mentoring. Awesome. Well, you guys can uh, email that that email address there and then follow along as well at Haberfield Baptist, well, Baptist Church. That was very Aussie, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, anyway, guys, we bless you. Uh, lots of love to you. Uh, have a great morning, evening, afternoon, wherever you are. Thank you so much again, Matt. What a joy, as always. Uh, just thank you again, Lana. It's just, it's just wonderful to share this space and to receive from you like this. Yeah, I feel very full as always. So it's, it's such a blessing. All right, guys. Well, lots of love. Have a great week and we'll see you soon. Okay. Bye. Bye.